Microsoft Office 210 proofing and printing. Whenever you've produced a document, you should always make sure you spell check and uh, grammar check the document. Uh, there's really no excuse for sending documents, uh, certainly outside your organizational company, that have uh, incorrect grammar or incorrect spelling. In order to spell check a document, simply bring up the, uh, the document that you require. You can use the shortcut, which is the F7 key normally, or failing that, if you go to the review button here, so you clicked on the review tab, the first uh, button here is grammar and spelling. If I click on that, notice down here it does show me, if I bring that back again, it does show me the shortcut for grammar and uh, speller checking is the F7 key. So now if I click on this button here, it opens the uh, dialog box for the grammar checking. And as you can see, in this particular case, the word is spelled right, but it's initialized uh, wrongly. So it's got a capital M-A, then a small I-N. as It should be capital M, small A-I-N, as has been suggested here. So I'll change that by clicking on the Change button. In this particular case, I've got the phrase, the system unit unit, which is obviously incorrect. It's a grammar error. So basically, it's, it's pointed out that uh, I've got a repeated word here. So I'll say, OK, I shall delete that. That's corrected that. In this case, the word system is spelled with two S's, and it suggested the, crop, the proper spelling here, which is correct. So I'll change that. It's found the word spreadsheets. Some people will use that as one word, but it suggested no, you have the word spread space sheets. So I'll accept its uh, suggestions and say, OK, change that. Over here, it's basically suggesting a grammar change. So it says a CD-ROM can store 650 megabytes of data, while a single layer, comma, single-sided. And it's suggesting I put um, a colon in there or a semicolon in there. So I'll accept its uh, suggestion. It's now find the word etc. Uh, many people just use it as is, but technically it should have a dot after it, so I'll accept that change. In this case, it's found a sentence that says, many computers are now supplied with sound cards and speakers, which means that when you run multimedia programs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in this case, it's suggested that we change the word means to mean. Um, I don't agree with that, so I'll say, no, nope, ignore that. So it doesn't always get it right. Similarly, down here, it's suggesting uh, that we rephrase the, uh, the paragraph. It says, these devices require the purchase of, a spe of special CDs um, to which you can write, called CDRs. Again, that could be better written, but I'll ignore it. In this case, it's found a word it doesn't actually understand. So it's found the words gigabyte, an abbreviation for the word gigabyte. And it's suggesting bytes or bytes, which again is wrong. So um, I'll say no. Gigabytes is fine as far as I'm concerned, so I ignore that. And it's now been completed, so if I now scroll up, you should find that all of those changes have been accepted by the system. Adding words to the built-in custom directory. Sometimes you'll find that uh, Microsoft Word will um, query words it doesn't understand because it doesn't necessarily mean the words are wrong, it just means it doesn't know about them. Because what happens is when you check um, the spelling within a document, Word has a long list of words it knows about. Uh, but there will be other words, maybe specialist words or um, maybe the um, company words that are specific to a particular company that, again, it doesn't know about. So, for instance, um, the words um, CCT Global. As you've seen in this case, it's uh, queried that, it's uh, underlined it in red, which basically means it doesn't understand that particular word. And if I press F7, remember F7 is the keyboard shortcut for spell checking. Sure enough, it says that's not in the dictionary. It doesn't mean it's wrong, it just means it's not in the dictionary. So what I can do is, uh, if this is a word that's important to me and I'm going to use over and over again in documents, I can say add to directory by clicking on this button here. That has now been added to the directory. So if I now type in the word CCT Global, as you can see, it's no longer identified with a red wavy line under it, indicating some sort of error. 
it now knows that that word is correctly spelt, um, but it's not a word that it was previously aware of, but it now is. Removing a word from the spell checking dictionary. In order to remove a word, uh, which is sometimes necessary, maybe you've inadvertently added a word and you suddenly realize your mistake and you want to make a change, then basically you have to have access to uh, removing words from the dictionary. So if you click on the file tab here, if we go to options, and then within the options dialog box, if we click on the proofing button here, you'll find there's various uh, options we have here. And this one here is the custom dictionary. If I click on the custom dictionary, that brings uh, this item up here and I just simply click on where it says edit word list and as you can see these are words that I've added and earlier on we added the uh, word CCT global to the list if I want to delete that I just simply select it delete it click on OK click on OK click on OK and that word is no longer in the dictionary As you can see, it no longer recognizes this particular word as a word that it knows about. Right, Word 210 printing options. In order to look at the printing options, bring up a document within Microsoft Word 210, click on the File tab here, and then click on the Print item here. As you can see, there's a whole range of items, so for instance, you can determine how many copies you want, you can just type in a uh, number, so if you wanted 10 copies, you'd type in 10. Or you can use the up and down arrows here to increase it as normal. It goes down to a minimum of 1, obviously, because there's no 0. You can set the particular printer you've got. So this is a def detop default printer. Notice we're getting an error message here it's saying the toner is low, so it's quite useful. It's warning us that the fact the toner is low. If I wanted to select another printer, I'd simply click on this and select the one I want. So for instance, maybe I wanted that one there, or this one here, um, or um, some other item. I just simply select the one I want, and uh, that would be selected. There's various other items in the settings here. So for instance, by default, it will print all pages. If you click on the down arrow here, there's various other options. You can print just the current page you're on. So if you've got a very, very long document, and you just want to see how one particular page uh, is displayed, then basically if you're on that particular page, it will just print the current uh, document. And there's various options, uh, other options here you can do, um, you can select. So for instance, you can um, display the document properties or a list of markup items, things like that. But uh, we'll leave this as the default, which is basically the entire document. You can print uh, one-sided. If I click down here, you can manually print uh, on both sides. So for instance, you could um, print um, just the old pages and just the even pages if your printer is not a duplex printer. You can control how it's um, collated, either collated or not collated. So uh, what that means is that if you had um, ten, um, a 10 page document and you wanted to say 10 copies, then basically you could select um, collated, which basically means it will print page 1 to 10 of the first document, then 1 to 10 of the second copy, then 1 to 10 of the third copy and so forth. If you had uncollated, what that means is it would print out 10 copies of the first page, then 10 copies of the second page and so on and so forth. Um, you can select the orientation, so you can have portrait or landscape. Portrait is the normal one, so as you can see in this particular case we have portrait. Uh, if you selected landscape, it would look like that. Um, I'll put this back as it was, so um, I'll go back to portrait. We can select the, uh, the size that we're going to use. So in the United States you'd use letter size. Um, in, say, the UK or, say, Australia, you'd use A4. So that's easily set from here. I'll set this to A4. Various other options we can choose. We can set the margins. So, for instance, we can have normal margins, narrow margins, wide margins, mirrored margins, or moderate margins. So these are like presets that you can basically set up. Or if you want a custom margin, you just click on here and uh, type in the values. Um, lastly here we've got um, printing one page per sheet. If you wanted to, you could have various other options. So for instance, you could have two pages per sheet, or four, or six, or eight, or even 16. Uh, obviously if it's 16 um, pages per sheet, it's going to be tiny, because it's not going to be readable. Um, but you might sometimes want some of these other options if you're producing handouts and want to save paper. 
Notice there are various other options you can use. So for instance, uh, you've got printer properties here. As well as changing the printer, you can change the properties of the particular printer. So in this particular case, the printer we're using is this one here. It's an HP LaserJet um, uh, 4200 series. And if I want to change the printer properties, I'd simply click on this item here. And from here, there's various things we could change. So for instance, um, we could have uh, different effects. We could have different finishing. So for instance, um, if um, we wanted to, we, we could um, print on both sides. Um, what else can we do? Let's have a look. Again, we can change things like the paper size and what have you. Um, you can change the different source. So if you've got more than one tray in your printer, you can change that as, um, as defaults. So as I say, there's various options here, but uh, it's important to realize that these options obviously will depend on your particular printer because these are properties relating to the particular printer that's set up as default. Um, lastly, we've got this other button down here, which is uh, Page Setup. If I click on this, this basically allows me to set things like margins and what have you, and uh, gutters. Again, we can change the orientation from here. If we want to, we can set the paper size again from here. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways of changing particular items. If we want to change the layout here, we can do that as well. So for instance, we can set, set it so that um, you have different headers and footers on odd and even pages. This basically means you can arrange it so that the, uh, the page numbering is at the edge of each page, depending on whether it's uh, an even or odd page. So as you've seen, if you have a look around, you'll find there's lots and lots of different options you can change uh, if you need to customize them. Right, selecting a printer. Bring up a Word document, click on the File tab, click on Print, and from here, you'll see the default printer is displayed. In this case, it's an HP LaserJet 4200. If you have access to other printers on a network, you can just simply come down here. So for instance, if I want to use this one or maybe that one there, notice that one's offline. It's either not switched on or you're not connected to it. This one here is ready. It says ready there. So if I wanted to print on uh, this particular one, which is um, a brother laser printer, I could click on that. That's now been selected, and when I click on print, it would use that particular printer. Um, so as I say, you should see a full list in here of the various printers that are available or have been installed. As I do bear in mind in some cases, as in this case here, they may be offline, um, maybe they're out of paper or they're not switched on or you're not connected to them, but you can simply switch from one printer to another. But as I say, you, you have a default printer normally, and in this particular case, the default printer is this one here. Notice if we bring that list up again, that one is indicated with a tick, which basically means this is the default printer. So even if I've made changes here, um, and as I save those changes, it would also go back to the default printer. Choosing what to print within a Word document. In order to uh, access these options, click on the File tab here, click on Print, and within here you've got your settings. So you can uh, decide what you're going to print. By default, it says print all pages. You click on the down arrow here. As you see, and you've got these various other options. So you can just have uh, the current page, or indeed you can have a range. So if I click on here, um, I can have a range of say page four to page seven. So that basically means I've specified exactly which pages to print. Setting the number of copies you want to print. As always, anything to do with uh, adjusting the uh, printing settings, you click on the File tab here, click on Print, and in order to determine how many copies you want, you just simply change this number here. So if I want 11 copies of this particular document, which is the one we're looking at, I would set this to 11 copies, then click on the Print button, and uh, off it would go to the printer, and you get 11 copies. Setting the pages per sheet that are printed. Click on the File tab, click on the Print item here, and down at the bottom here, as you can see by default, it prints one page per sheet. In order to change that, you just simply select the required items. So if you wanted four uh, pages per sheet, you would click on that, click on the Print button, and uh, out they print. I'll set this back to uh, one page per sheet, which is the default. Printing only odd or even pages. Click on the File tab, click on Print, click on what you want to print here, 
and then at the bottom it says uh, only print odd pages or only print even pages so if I said uh, okay I only want to print um, odd pages then when I click on the print button only the odd pages will be printed you might think well why would you want to do this well if you want to print on both sides of your um, paper and the printer is not what's called a duplex printer which prints automatically on both sides what you can do is try printing all the odd pages first and when they, they finish printing you, you put those back into the printer, turn them around so you can print on the other side and then print all the even pages. Um, you should be aware this doesn't always work too successfully especially if you're using a laser printer because the laser printer is quite hot and you find that the paper quite often curls up so if you do want to try this your best bet is to print, say, a document with just the odd pages. When, once it's printed, let it cool down completely. Um, maybe put something heavy on top of it just to smooth out the pages. Turn the pages over, put them back in the printer and give it a try. Uh, your best bet, if you want to print on uh, both sides of the paper, is get what's called a duplex printer. And that will automatically print on both sides of the pages in one go. It's uh, a lot more successful. Preview and printing a document in Word 210. We've got a sample document on the screen here. The easiest way to print the entire document is just press Control P, which is the shortcut for printing. If you want a bit more control over that, you click on the File tab, click on Print, and again, if you just simply want to print the document, click on the Print button here. If you want to preview the document, here's the first page, and notice down the bottom it says Page 1 of 5. So I click on this little arrow here, which is the next page. There's the next page, and you can see exactly how it's going to print. Click on the button again, and again, so basically we're looking at page 5 of 5, if we want to go the other way, we click on this button, the previous page button, and you can see exactly um, how it's going to print, so you get a nice preview of the way it prints. Um, if you need to, you can uh, go back into um, the editing sections in Word and make some more changes. If you want to print, you just simply click on the print button, if you want to make changes, number of copies, click here, and as you see, there's various other options you can change. So let's say you want to change it to um, a4, if you suddenly realize you had the wrong um, page size, you'd make that, you'd see a preview, and again you can go through, check it's looking okay, and once you're happy, click on the print button. Simple as that.